Good morning, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. 19 November 2024, 9.39 a.m. Western Australia, 1 Corinthians. A premise. I love the word of the Lord. I really love this beautiful, wonderful, precious King James Bible. And I'm so glad and grateful to the Lord. In 2012, when I came to the Gospel of Christ, preached by the Apostle Paul and to Pauline Doctrine, I also came back to the King James Bible after many years of roaming <laughs> in the desert of ignorance using perverted Bibles. But now, praise God, I have come to a realization that there is only one pure word preserved infallible and that's the King James Bible so in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 1 Paul says Paul called to be an apostle of Jesus Christ through the will of God reference to chapter 9 and chapter 22 and chapter 26 of the book of Acts and Sosthenes a brother unto the church of God which is a Corinth to them that are sanctified in Christ Jesus called to be saints with all that in every place call upon the name of Jesus Christ our Lord both theirs and ours grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ thank you Lord Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord, because since you have called this man to be the apostle, the preacher, teacher of the Gentiles in faith and verity, since you save Solo Tarsus, who becomes Paul, and put him in the defense and confirmation of the gospel, and gave to him the revelation of the mystery in this, the dispensation of grace of God, Praise God, since then we are in the grace. Thank you, Lord. So a good for nothing, an ungodly sinner, enemy of God in the flesh, as me in Adam, coming to this world and believing the glorious gospel, the grace of God, gets saved and sealed by grace and becomes a member in particular of the new creature, which is the body of Christ, headed to heavenly places where we already see them by faith, in Christ, to the glory of God, to the eternal glory of God, we're going to give glory to God forever and ever because He is a God of glory. He is the Lord of glory, the great King. King of kings and lords of lords, immortal, invisible, only wise God, eternal, immortal King, the only potentate and also the King of kings and lords of lords on earth. Praise God when He's going to come and establish His Millennium Kingdom on earth with his saved and restored Israel of the future. But now we are in this, the dispensation of grace of God. So the salutation of Paul in every letter and the, and the closure is always grace and peace. In some reason, written grace, mercy and peace. A triplet. Praise God. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. So because of this glorious grace and because of what Christ has accomplished by dying on us on, for our sins on that cross of Calvary, being buried, rising again for our justification, Romans 4.25 says that Christ was delivered for our offenses, was risen again for our justification. We, the body of Christ, are under grace and always find grace, 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 grace in the letters of Paul. And peace because therefore, Romans 5 verse 1, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> Praise God. And Paul says, I thank my God always on your behalf for the grace of God which is given you by Jesus Christ. Oh, praise God. Wow. Unless Jesus Christ, who is the second person of the Godhead, the Word, 
capital W seven times present the King James Bible, unless he would have left the glory of heaven and been born of the Virgin by the power of the Spirit, fulfilling Genesis 3.15, fulfilling Isaiah 7.14, unless he would have come to this earth. He went to his earthly nation, Israel. And then in the course of his ministry, at the end, he would die on that cross and shed his precious blood. We wouldn't have the atonement, but we do. Praise God. And we are at peace with God. We can call him Father now. We could not call him Father when Christ was here in the four Gospels. Because at that time, Paul says in Ephesians 2.11, Wherefore remember that ye, being time past Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision, but that which is called the circumcision made in the flesh by hands, that at that time ye were strangers and aliens from the covenants of the commonwealth of Israel. We were, <clears throat> ye were, we were Gentiles. Without God, without Christ, without hope in the world. But now, praise God, we are children of God. But now we are saved and sealed. But now, in this a dispensation of the grace of God. And you, we find out with Paul that he's thanking <clears throat> his God, which is our God. But, you know, he, he also is so bold in saying, thank my God always on your behalf. For the grace of God which is given you by Jesus Christ. The word grace, you know, there's a, an acronym, I say, you know, when it says, God reaches a crisis fences. Yes, yeah, a good one. But really, the word grace in the original Greek, because it's charis, means gift. And so God has given us a glorious, wonderful gift. The, the gift of eternal life. Giving us Christ as our Savior, Lord, Redeemer, the head of the body of Christ, which is the new creature. And those Corinthians, carnal as they are, we know the story, they're still saved and sealed, and they're part of the body of Christ. And that's for every one of us who has believed and received this gospel. Without doing anything, no, you know, confession of sin, confess with our mouth, uh, confession of the sinner's prayer, repenting. Uh, yeah, we repent in a sense we change our mind. We understand we can't save ourselves. Okay, in that sense, yes. But it's not necessary as a formula repent. To be baptized without water baptism, without uh, participation to any religious activity or sort. Just because of what is done. For the Christ died for our sins. How many? All of them. Past sins, present sins, future sins. From the point of view of God, Whatever we do now, 2,000 removed from the cross, are things, so to say, the whole future. So they've been taken care of, past, present, future sins, because now he looks, he sees us in Christ, praise God, saved and sealed, accept, blessed and complete in Christ, who is the other old principality and powers. And so Paul is saying, and I and I, and the body, the rest of the body of Christ, we, we join him with him to say thank God you know I thank my God always on for the grace of God the grace of God the gift of God grace is the favor of God beyond the, the wildest imagination is the God of all grace he's given us abundance of grace praise be to God the father of mercy the father of grace I mean no, nobody compares to him his glorious wonderful God it's all about him you know this book is about him and we find out our place, the position, thanks to His grace and love and care. But God commends His love towards us. Romans chapter 5 says that while we were yet without strength, while we were yet ungodly, sinners, enemies of God in Adam, when we were dead in trespasses and sins, when we were children of wrath and disobedience, He has saved us. Christ shed His blood. He was... Prophetically, you know, there is nothing that hints to the mystery. But when Christ was on that cross, he knew, because he was God in the flesh, what he was doing. And he fulfilled the will of the Father perfect, perfectly. And now we can enjoy this glorious fellowship 
Praise God. And he says that in everything, thanking God on the behalf of the Corinthians, ye are enriched by him. And that's what it is. The riches of God, the riches of Christ are ours now because we are in Christ. And it's a gift. Remember, you don't, for a moment, stop. Don't think, oh, because I pray, because I read the Bible, because I preach or teach, because I go to religious functions. No, it's always by grace. Is a gift and gifts and gifts. Everything that God does is a gift for us. Otherwise, we wouldn't be worth a dime. In Adam, we are dead. In Christ, we live. That in everything, yeah, enriched by Him in all utterance and in all knowledge. Wow, even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you, in you. You see? So that ye. You see the plural, that's the King James Bible. It's not only you, one person here. The entire body of believers in Corinth can be behind in no gift. Doing what? Waiting for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, this is not the second coming, my dear brothers and sisters. This is going to be the next event on God's calendar called the catching up of the body of Christ, or people call it rapture, because in the Latin vulgar, Bible is the verb use is rapiemur from the verb rapere or from the, 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 the Old Testament, the sorry, the Greek uh, uh, New Testament Koine Greek is called ar arpazo, which you in one well, these words ar rapere, ar arpazo, catching up means catching up with violence, with suddenly <laughs> gonna take us because. Why are the rest of the world, the religious world, is waiting for the second coming? Think that Jesus is coming now, you know, a second time. And they say, oh, we don't know the day and the hour. He's going to come for sure, man. But that's going to pass of that, before that, before the great tribulation, before this Jacob's trouble week of years that is going to come. He's going to catch, he's going to come in the air to, uh, to catch up his body of believers, his ambassadors from the third heaven. Those who are dead, they're going to be risen and unite with the Spirit because it's come with their spirits. And those who are alive are going to get transformed in a moment. In a <laughs> Paul explains in 1 Corinthians 15, 51, they, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. Now, the premise. At this moment, because there is a big war going on in that land, the holy land, from this fake, false Israel, Zionism against the this Palestinian and the Palestinian with them, whatever it is. And, and there is a big war in Russia, Ukraine, and there is the fear, the possibility of a bigger, uh, you know, war worldwide, <laughs> because Satan is what he wants to destroy people as much as possible. Now you have all this false, fake pretenders. Hirelings or religion, they start to give you the date all over again. They failed to, in the last 2000 years, they failed miserably, and they're still going to do it. Date sectors. I mean, I'm 75, many of you know, and in 1972, I first believed I was in a cult, but then, by the grace of God, in 2012, came to the Gospel of Christ. But I remember even that period, they were already. Uh, writing books and um, conferences, uh, the second coming, the rapture. It didn't happen, did it? Because they, we cannot do anything except the will of God. Outside of the will of God, we can say all the stupidity that we want. I remember in 1988 book, you know, 88 Reasons Why Christ Has to Come Back in 1988. We are in 2024. He hasn't can. <laughs> well, it's in his time, times and seasons belong to the Lord. In his time, he will. But it's not up to me or you or anyone out there on the internet or in this mortal, bricks and mortal temples of doom of denomination to say, God gave me a special revelation. I had a vision or I had a dream. Yes, witchcraft in this dispensation of grace, because God's not doing it. 
is not intervening in the affairs of men. God did not elect Trump or Biden before or Obama or, or Kennedy. God is not involved in the affairs of men in this sense. No, even with this Israel, because there is no Israel God on that land. Since Israel is blind, is fallen, is not saved, it's going to be the remnant, it's going to be saved by the Lord when he comes a second time in the Great Tribulation. He's going to defend. It's called Jacob's trouble and he should save out of it. Jacob is Israel, but Israel God, not people that call themselves Jews and they are not. Or maybe they are... Kazarian Jews, yes, but nothing to do with the people of God. So they can be under no gift. So the Corinthian at that time, Paul with them, was waiting because God didn't say to Paul, hey, but Paul, listen, when this and this is going to happen on earth, that's an arbinger or a premonition or an advice or that I'm coming back to get you. Eh? No, he didn't. So who are you or me or anybody out there who has had the audacity to put dates and stir up people and say, hey, da, da. the rapture is called the blessed hope, the glory is appearing of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. They he was waiting for that with them together. Together with them, okay? <laughs> anyway, the most important thing to see is that you can be behind in no gift waiting for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, those gifts in the, in the book of Corinthians, they don't, they cease. But we have the greatest gift of all, eternal salvation and the gift of the Holy Ghost. Because the Holy Ghost for us, the body of Christ, is the one who baptizes us for the sake of identification into the death of Christ when we believe this gospel. It's an operation of God. It's an operation of the Spirit. It's unseen, unfelt, untouchable. It doesn't come under the five senses. There's no manifestation in the body. It's an operation of God. He takes you out of Adam and puts you into Christ. He baptizes you into the death of Christ. Romans 6 explains that. Knowing the water, okay, of your local assembly or in the ocean, on the lake, on the river, or even in the Jordan River, you know, some spiritual people, mystical, they go to Israel. Do you I want to be baptized in the Jordan River because Jesus was baptized? He was not baptized for you. And he was not a sinner. He was identifying himself with the nation that he came to save. And in, in his function as Messiah, King, Prophet, High Priest, and so forth, he had to be baptized according to the Lord. That's why he said to John the Baptist, let's fulfill all righteousness. Because John the Baptist, he said, well, I need to be baptized by you, you baptized. Eh. John do what, what God says. And he did. And, you know, the, 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 the heaven was open, you know, and the Holy Ghost, the stand upon Christ was coming out of the water and the voice as the dove was lightning as the dove it's not the dove and the voice of god was heard this is my beloved son in whom i will please listen to him and he's not the least except the little flock believed by the rest of the nations rejected him but to those who believe he gave the power to become children of god that's the new birth for them for them we are not in the born again we are part of the new creature thank you jesus the new it didn't exist before, it's the revelation of the mystery. Waiting for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall confirm you unto the end. God is faithful, you know. It's written here. That ye might be blameless, who shall confirm you unto the end. Blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's absolutely glorious, it's amazing, to think, I know myself in the flesh. I'm good for nothing, but I'm worthy of hell and the lack of fire for eternity. But guess what? I'm going to be there in the presence of God, even now, blameless because of Christ, not because of me. You know, he imputes to us the righteousness of Christ Jesus, our Lord. The very moment we believe this gospel, just like Abraham believed God and that was imputed unto him for righteousness, same thing to you. Romans 4. Same thing to you, good for nothing as you are, as me. He saves you, he saves you. He, he, de he declares you righteous because of Christ. He sanctifies you, he redeems you. It's the wisdom of God given to you. Praise God, that's the power of the cross of Christ. Thank you, Jesus. And then he says, verse 9, God is 
faithful. Now let's get this word here printed in our in the man. God is faithful to what? To his word. So whatever he wrote concerning Israel in the prophetic is going to take place. Every word of God is going to be fulfilled. What needs to, still to be fulfilled in the future. Okay? And every word of God has been fulfilled. When Jesus can be fulfilled, 351 prophecies in my website. I, I put those, you know, I even made a video about it. And whatever is written here, you can say yes, because God is faithful. Let God be true and every man a liar. He's a God of truth. Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. You understand? He's faithful. <laughs> He's not going to fail any of his promises to Israel in the past and future and to us, the new creature, the body of Christ. And that's why he's saying, God is faithful by whom ye, the Corinthians, were called unto the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. In religious jargon, I say, people, I have a relationship with Jesus. No, you don't. But you are in the fellowship. You are calling to, unto the fellowship of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. It's more than a relationship. Because a relationship, you know, between a man and woman can be broken for whatever reason. But fellowship is eternal. Praise God. We are sealed into Christ with all the Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the first possession unto the praise of His glory. I'll close with this. If you haven't believed yet, this glorious gospel that saves you and seals you and guarantees you eternal life as a free gift, please believe now. <clears throat> what do you need to believe? It's so simple that it's going to really shake you. How the Christ died for us things, including yours, according to the scriptures, and that he was buried and they rose again the third day according to the scriptures. You believe this gospel that I just got tell you, gave you, that the resurrection of Christ? He saves you and he seals you for eternity. Please, believe. I keep it short because sometimes when I have too long people get tired, I understand. Grace and peace to all. To those who are in Christ already and to those who are not, get in Christ as, so, as soon as possible, which will be now, by believing and receiving this gospel of the cross. To God be all the glory. Amen. Forever and ever. Amen.